Good morning, good morning. It's a very bright morning this morning. <clears throat> it's a lovely Friday morning, so I've got Friday afternoon off. Although I've never played golf in my life. So, what I want to talk to you about today, <clears throat> that's everything. I want to uh, talk to you about getting your x-ray unit inspected and also perhaps more broadly about statutory regulation and customer service, uh, all of which are relevant to dentists. So we decided that we needed to have our, it was time for our x-ray unit to be inspected and it's a standard 70 kilovolt thing we use for taking the bite wings. And um, of course, before the Care Quality Commission came in, these sort of things were, they just went on for years and years and years. You know, I mean, I had one on the wall of the surgery. We used it for 20 years, probably wasn't inspected once. But, but that's not quite true because we inspected it. Every time we took a bite wing, it was inspected for quality, etc., etc., And dose and uh, everything. So, and that, that sufficed really because these things are, I don't know, for the most of the part there, apart from the only thing that's not solid state, I would imagine is the switch. Um, and so, you know, and that's just a straightforward, just closes the circuit. Look at this lunatic here. No helmet. I had a friend who nearly killed himself on one of these. There's a bolt at the front of these things that, uh, uh, is the hinge, you know, where they put the put the um, handlebars up and fold the handlebars down, and uh, he, he got loose, and so he replaced it with another bolt that he bought from just anywhere online from China, whatever. That bolt fractured in use while he was riding it, and uh, the handlebars became detached from the wheels, and uh, he went ass over, you know where, and. Uh, and knocked himself out. So he always, uh, sensible people always wear crash helmets when they're using those things, but then they're not used by sensible people for, for the most part, are they? Anyway, I was talking about x-ray inspection. So, so we got this, uh, we, we, we booked uh, an inspection, 230 quid it was, I think, something like that, from a, um, a, a, a supply company that shall remain nameless but I'll call them Dental Directory. And uh, they offered to come over and sign us off, you know. And it is literally, it's a sign off. It's not, there's no maintenance or anything involved. It's just literally take some x-rays using an x-ray dosimeter, uh, record the results and uh, send them off to their guy, their RPA, whoever he is. And he then looks and says, yeah, that's within parameters. Uh, we'll sign your unit off. So. Anyway, he turned up, and the first thing that I noticed about him was that he had BO. And I think that's because he wears the same overalls every day, all day, every day. And it may be that he's just not in the mood to stick him in the washing machine when he gets home. But anyway, that, that immediately puts you off, doesn't it? You know, you see someone, if they've got one or more of the following, greasy hair, BO, bad breath, unpolished shoes, he's always a bad sign. Anyway, he's working in the x-ray room, so we don't care. Next thing, he comes back and says, um, the x-ray won't work. Can't get the x-ray to work. Uh, so, I go in there and, you know, we've got the first, your first instinct when, when an x-ray engineer says the x-ray's not working, is whether or the switch is packed up. So we started taking the switch apart. And then I finally, when we got the switch apart, I finally realized that in order to uh, get this x-ray to work, you have to press a on button. There's a, there's a button which is a, on a timer. So you, like, you press this button and for the next like 20 seconds or so, you can take an x-ray. But then after that, it deactivates the whole set. So in addition to switching the set on, you also, when you're about to take an exposure, you have to press this pre-exposure activating button. Now, 
And the reason why I didn't immediately think of that is because that this is a new thing. These units didn't used to have these pre-exposure buttons. You, you turn the unit on, you press the button and it took an x-ray. But okay, fair enough. So, so that immediately breaks the question of this bloke who's supposed to be uh, testing my x-ray machine doesn't actually, he's not done any research into the model or the make, he hasn't read the instruction booklet, he's, uh, and he doesn't know how to work it basically, he just doesn't know how to work it. So there I am as a dentist with a responsibility, you know, to him as, I suppose as a subcontractor, uh, to his health, and he's turned up and indicated to me straight away that he doesn't know what he's doing. And that, you know, he could radiate himself to death, for all I know, because uh, he's got access to possibly all the internal workings of this thing. He could turn it up to 7 million kilovolts, probably. But anyway, I, I'm, that's, uh, anyway I'm not, that's not a serious worry, but I mean, for, so there's two things that haven't gone right. <coughs> he turned up with BO and he doesn't know how to work the, the x ray machine. So anyway, when I finally say to him, you do know that you've got to press this button before you take an exposure, I then, I then left him to it. Now, when we got the report back from Dental Directory, it showed that the x-ray unit was fine. There's nothing wrong with it, right? But thank you, 230 quid, thanks very much. And, uh, and it's just another one of these uh, costs that have to be passed on to the patients, don't they? they patients complaining that uh, they can't find an NHS dentist and if NHS dentists are having to got this additional cost of 230 pounds just to get their x-ray unit certified then you know you can understand why the, the margins on dentistry are so such that uh, nobody really wants to work on the NHS but that's a little bit of a side uh, avenue there because uh, you know, they, he wrote back and he said, yeah, <clears throat> this is his boss. Yeah, it's passed. It's passed. Uh, okay. But there are two things that need attention. One is it needs a collimator. Now, now a collimator is a tiny little lead filter that is in the shape of the bite wing. And what it does is it basically eliminates any x-rays going into the patient outside of what is really the diagnostic area. So in other words, if you're going to have a bite wing, you get the x-rays through the bite wing shape and, and not anywhere else. And also, there's no uh, aiming device. So an aiming device is an external uh, frame that you get the patient to put in their mouth and bite on, and you use, the, um, use it to line up the x-ray. Now, my problem with this was that we, we have both a collimator and an aiming device. And I think because this bloke was so embarrassed about the fact that he couldn't work the x-ray, um, he was loath to say to us, have you got, well, I, I, think, I think he was incompetent in so far as he didn't see them because they are literally, they were literally on the shelf right next to his head at eye level the whole time. I mean, a big box of aiming devices, not just one aiming device. We haven't just got one in the steriliser. We've got, there's a box of them, right? As you know, anyone who uses aiming devices, which is basically everybody, you've got three or four bite wings, you know, in, in a sterilised bag, haven't you? You've got one or two periapicals, you've got one or two anteriors. And, and the other thing is the collimator. Now, I wrote back to the uh, bloke who did the report and I said, look, we have bo got both a collimator and uh, aiming devices and I can't understand what his problem is because uh, they were both in the, the room, you know. That was another thing. He came out and he said, what do you call, I need to put down the location of the x-ray. What do you call the x-ray in this room? What, what do you call the room? And we said, we call it the x-ray room. So, you know, we, we weren't getting on well. We weren't bonding, let's put it that way. Do you know what I mean? He was like, he was probably tired. He's probably in his clothes from two or three days ago. I don't know if he's sleeping in his car or what. But, uh, and then he's getting us, 
are doing the, you know, funny answers to his, the way he sees his genuine questions. So, <laughs> anyway, so I said, look, you know, I, I agree with all of this except for the fact that he said that we need a collimator and we need a naming device, and, and we've obviously got both of those. And really, I think he should have seen them because they were they were with the X-ray. And the bloke said, well, they weren't uh, fitted to the X-ray. Now, there's a reason why the collimator's not fitted to the X-ray, and that is because you need to have the precision of NASA to line up uh, a bite wing taken through a collimator with an aiming device and a sensor inside a patient's mouth. I'm not saying it's not possible, and I'm not saying you can't get better at it with practice. But the chances are, I think, far greater that you're going to lose some diagnostic detail because the collimator is going to block the x-rays out from part of the sensor than, than your, <clears throat> the risk posed to the patient. So we use a collimator when it's prudent to. And sometimes we don't, okay? Sometimes we don't because that's what's in the patient's best interest and that's our professional duty to do that. So, but the aiming device, there's no excuse. And, and not only that, the fact that he said that well, the aiming device wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, fitted to the x-ray shows that, again, as an RPA, he really has got no idea. Really, really, basically, what he was doing is he was defending his guy who'd uh, done this report and said that there's no collimator and no aiming device. He was just defending him, however stupid that decision had been. He was just saying, yeah, well, I mean, basically what he said to me was, look, you know, you've had your x-ray inspected, it's come back okay, we've made a couple of notes, you've, all you've got to do is you've got to say, yeah, we've addressed the problem that it doesn't have a collimator or, a, or a, <clears throat> an aiming device. <laughs> and we promise to do it, do it correctly in the future. Well, let me see if I can just get in somewhere here because it is tricky. I don't think I'm gonna be able to. <clears throat> Right, I'll be back in a second. So, sorry about that. Of my uh, grandson forgot his sunglasses, so I had to drop them off. So uh, yeah, so I mean, this is really the anatomy of a of a service that I've bought and paid for that's gone gone hopelessly wrong. You know, I mean, I. I did say I'm not, you know, I wasn't going to go on of complaining about this because for a start the bloke is plainly wrong but he's absolutely, he's one of these people that's not prepared to admit that, you know, it's not, <laughs> no, no reflective learning from this guy, okay. <laughs> he doesn't, and the points that really that he was on, you know, losing ground on such as, uh, whether or not, the, you know, we use an aiming device, he just ignores those. So, and you find this a lot when people argue, if they're, if, they, if they're not winning a point, they just ignore it and move on to salvaging what they can of the rest of their argument, you know. So he's like, oh, well, you know, uh, the, the engineer can only inspect the machine as found. And that uh, if it didn't have a collimator fitted, then he has to assume that it's, used without a collimator routinely which is not not true at all I mean part of the problem and the other reason why we don't use the collimator is it's a bit of a loose fit which is fine when the x-ray is sideways but it's stored hanging down and so uh, we always take the collimator off 
Um, and he's, he's like, you know, well, if the collimator's falling off your machine, then then perhaps that's something you ought to about, you know, just sort of just pathetic trying to find fault, which is, and I was thinking to myself, yeah, well, thanks, the next time I take a vertex occlusal through the top of someone's head with a bite wing, uh, bite wing holder, I'll, uh, I'll bear your highly useful x-ray, expert x-ray advice in mind. But you can't have uh, an aiming device fitted to an x-ray permanently. They don't, you know, perhaps they do exist, I don't know, but I've never ever seen one. <coughs> so there you go, that's the whole unsatisfactory, sorry saga, of us getting our, uh, fulfilling our statutory obligations to pay some money to some quasi-governmental uh, for some quasi-governmental inspection. Because it's the law, it's the law. The cry of the statutory body. It's the law. So, what, what, you know, what can you learn from that? The, um, when we had our CQC inspection, it was carried about by a girl. Well, I say girl. I oh, she was probably in her twenties. With me, me in my late fifties, early sixties. So I suppose that you, I'm entitled to call her a girl, relative to the, my uh, my own age. But um, but the point is that you know, she was someone I think who had applied to do CQC testing at a time when they were very short of testers and weren't offering a brilliant wage but you know it's probably it's a bit like being a local councillor isn't it even even the local councillor's wage is a lot if you're on the dole and uh, she decided that she wanted to be a CQC inspector and you know we were quite interested in her qualifications her bona fides to be a CQC inspector and she was very cagey about them you know you know when people being cagey and she said that she you know she's quite happy to admit that she's not a dentist said that she'd been previously she'd been a practice manager uh, which means nothing which means nothing you know it does not really give her any inside track on inspecting a dental practice uh, certainly not the, the you know anyone who's doing things incorrectly and her training really which was what justified her holding the title of CQC inspector was was all that was all that entitled her to you know I think the CQC got to the point where they're like well we're not going to get anybody with specialist knowledge to to cross train as an inspector so what we're going to do is um, institute a training program and start saying that anyone can be a CQC inspector even off the street, you know, even out of school. Providing you go through our training process that you're you're a CQC inspector and don't let anybody tell you that you're not, you know. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't make value judgments about how they're running their surgery. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, um, I mean, the, what's the similarity between those two things is that, um, in both cases, what they're doing is they're just they're judging based on the objective uh, things that they see and find, which in the case of the <clears throat> X-ray was the the X-ray unit and uh, and then for totally failing to see the the rest of it, um, and in the CQC they keep it objective by just asking to see fire extinguisher checklists and you know um, just paperwork just paperwork not in any way uh, really uh, enabling them to judge whether or not the surgery is properly run or uh, achieves uh, how much health gain unlike the old days of course when we had the regional dental officers or the dental reference officers as they were called um, who were all dentists were all dentists and basically uh, not only did they know exactly how to run a dental surgery and exactly what was being done right and what was where corners were being cut but they also knew you you know which 
You might say, well, that's a bad thing. That's just like mixing with your guy who's gonna act as the judge in your case. Well, you know, that dentists weren't like that. Dentists were very competitive. If a dentist got a chance to put another dentist out of business, he would. Do you know what I mean? You had to be on your top form to uh, be a, 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 a visit from a dental reference officer used to strike fear into the local dentist because they knew that he knew what he was doing. The CQC, in my opinion, really don't know what they're doing. They don't. No, and what they're doing is not effective anyway. So they not only is it not effective, they don't even know how to do it. Um, not efficiently anyway, you know. I mean, they should say, look, these are the policies we need to see. And here's our portal. Upload them to our portal. And then if we're missing anything, we'll let you know two weeks before we attend. And so you don't get the situation where the CQC inspector is saying, well, I'd like to see your employment certificates. And you're like, well, yeah, but they're, they're on our server, you know? And they're, um, they're among literally 450,000 other files. And, they, and you've left it to the actual day of the inspection to ask to see them. You know, I, I, I'd be inclined to say, look, you know, thanks very much. Write down what you need and we'll send it to you in the next two weeks. But instead you have to run around like an idiot, wasting time, trying to impress some ex-dental nurse. Now, the, I understand, right, from the dental x-ray point of view, what happens is that people don't use, for example, collimators. They don't use them. Because they're the, they're the sort of thing that is like, oh, yeah, well, we can, you know, spend all our time saying to our patients that the, the x-ray dose is incredibly low and lower than eating a banana or whatever or two Brazil nuts. And in fact, I've probably got more radiation driving to work today than I would get from a couple of, you know, a couple of millisieverts easily from a, from a, a pair of bite wings. And then you've got these absolute fanatics saying, no, you've got to use collimators on bite wings because if you can block off, I don't know, 30% of the radiation, then, then <clears throat> that's worth the chance that you'll just get, you know, one in five of your x-rays to be completely dud because the collimator and the laming device won't, won't match up. <coughs> I mean, I'm exaggerating, but you know, it's not, it's not a plus, it's not like a binary decision good or bad I mean you get x-rays which are good enough or just not good enough whatever but the x-ray guy when he's inspecting he has to see right you know he's been told if you don't see a collimator on the machine then assume they don't use it right and don't ask them if they use it because no ex no dentist is gonna say uh, yeah, there's, I know there's a collimator there, but we never use it. They're not going to say that. So don't, don't ask them if they use it. If it's not on the machine, assume they don't use it. If it's on the machine, assume they use it. So, <clears throat> the number one lesson to be learned out of this is if you're having your bite wings machine inspected, put a bloody collimator on it. Just literally put it on it. Now what you're going to do about uh, the aiming devices, I don't know. Because if someone is, is not, you know, if they're told specifically not to ask about how the machine is used, right? If they, if he'd said to me, can you tell me how you use this machine? I would have said, yeah, we put a collimator on it, we use an aiming device. There they are literally six inches away from your nose <clears throat> but he's been told that he can't ask that because obviously the dentist will make up what they do now if there's no collimator there and there's no aiming machine aiming devices there then i think it's safe to assume that they probably they're probably not used but it's not safe to assume if they are patently there that they're not used 
But that is the assumption that is still made, that they're not used. So, uh, and given that you kind of, you know, I mean, the only way he could have, the only way he could have reached the conclusions that he did, that we need to use an aiming device, was by asking me how I use it, and me saying, uh, well, we just line it up, you know, we don't have an aiming device. But they don't ask about, they're not concerned about how the thing is operated, and the same way as the key, CQC is not concerned about how the, uh, the surgery is operated, they're just really about examining the physical evidence. And yet, in both cases, they are inferences are drawn about the type of surgery it is, how good it is, what, how, you know, the quality of the work, etc., etc. And, and the quality of the x-rays. I want one of those, I want one of those grass cutters. They're called Arians. They're American and they're difficult to get in the UK and they're expensive. I might start a GoFundMe. Yeah, so that's how, that's how a dentist with, with a functional x-ray, with a, <coughs> with an aiming device, and with a collimator can get a report saying that the x-ray is fine but it needs an, uh, an aiming device and a collimator. I mean go figure, go figure and you know he, he was like <laughs> why do you care do you know what I mean you've got your x-ray unit certified all you've got to do is say yeah we, in future we'll use a collimator and a blah 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 <coughs> And they're satisfied because they've done, they probably copy pasted somebody else's report into mine and charged £230 for a £40 visit. And, uh, you know, and that's the way it's supposed to work. Although I'm just not, but the, the, my problem is I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not the sort of person that could do that, you know. I just can't, I just can't do that. Right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.